everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be talking about books about fairies. Let's get going. So spring has finally come and came yesterday but we're in Canada so we still have snow. So spring won't come until May. I wish I was joking. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> so but yeah, so I got out of green to celebrate spring and also St. Patrick's Day is was on Friday, so happy St. Patrick! If you do celebrate it, so let's get going. Also, keep in mind these that these books are also really old. So, like I'm talking about 2008 and going upwards. So these are old, but I still find them really interesting, and I hope I will really like them. So I don't know, I think just because they are so old, 2008 old, but you know, so things will change all, all the time, but um, yeah, so let's just get going. So the first one is Court of Benetton, Benetton by K.L. Moody, and Fairy wasn't supposed to be real. Tricked by a fairy prince, Elora is stuck in the fairy realm, far from her young sisters who will depend on her for survival. Under the terms of her, of her bargain, she can't go home to the mortal world until Prince Blanick becomes the next High King, or until he's taken out of the running. Sabotaging Blanick's chance of, at the crown will be much faster than helping him win. The Fae Prince may be charming, powerful, and wickedly handsome, but that won't stop Elora from selling his secrets to the highest bidder. By day, she uses her master sword skills to train the prince while ignoring her growing attraction to him. By night, she conspires with the rival king in a nearby court whose plans could destroy half her fairy. If she gets caught, Bannock will kill her, but what's life with, without a little bit of danger? I agree, what's life without a danger? Okay. And my next one, this is the first book of fairy, it is Lamnet, the Fairy's Queen Deception. By Maggie Steve, Steve Batter. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. 16 year old dear 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 Monagahan is painfully shy but prodigiously gifted musician. She's about to find out she is also a clover hand, one who can see fairies. Daily Delaney finds herself infatuated with the mysterious boy who enters her ordinary suburban life, seemingly out of thin air. Trouble is, the enigmatic and gorgeous look turns out to be Gallo Glass, a soulless fairy assassin, an equally hunky and equally dangerous dark fairy soldier named Andor Han is also stalking Deli Deli. Sworn enemies, Luke and Al Dahan, each have deadly assignment from the fairy queen, namely kill Deli Deli before her music captures the attention of the fairy and threatens the queen's sovereignty. Caught in the past five, Deli Deli is James, her wise racking, wise cracking but lowly best friend. Deli Deli had been wishing her life once so dull, but getting trapped in the middle of a centuries old fairy war isn't exactly what she had in mind. Well, you know the saying, be careful what you wish for. My next one is Bones of Fairy by Jenny Lee Simner. And the war between humanity and fairy devastated both sides. I saw 50 new Eliza has been told. Nothing has been seen or heard from fairies since Eliza's world bears the scars of its encounter with magic. Trees move with sinister intention and a town lies a call's home is surrounded by a forest that threatens to harm all those who wander into it. Then Liza discovers she has the fairy ability to see into the past into the future and she has no choice but to flee her town. What is The Lost Coven by Becca Harris? Felicity Hawthorne has never been superstitious. Coming from a long line of Appa Appalachian healers, she helped non cast grounding spells and left gifts for the candy and moonshine for the fair folk. But was any of it real? Likely not. Not likely. But when Felicity spots a mysterious boy, and a school that no one else can see, she begins to question the true origins of her family's beliefs, as well as her place within it. Can magic really exist? Will all of Nan's stories true? Will her parents really who they seem to be? Desperate for answers, Felicity follows the boy deep into the forest to discover a secret world lost to time itself. So this is actually like a 
second book of Entanglement Fate. The first one is Curse of the Wolf King by Tasonia Undead. So the first one is like a beauty and a beast been telling. So a beastly fake king with a deadly curse and devious bargain to break it. All Jenna Bella Fell wants to leave her past behind and forget the day's scandal broke her heart. But when she's captured by a trickster fake king who threatens to hold her for ransom, she will find herself at the top of the gossip column yet again. So now with the sequel, it is a Cinderella retail, so a playboy prince in want of a decoy bride, a seven girl desperate for a disguise. Maven shift to the prince flag of his every social crime and deep intense dream. He is handsome, heir to the lunar court throne, and deliciously single. Every young woman wants to bend him, run him, or steal a moment of his time. Except, of course, Amber Montgomery. There's always that one person. Half pay Amber craves freedom from her combining stepfamily as if they want enough to deal with. A chance encounter with the arrogant Prince Franco leaves her humiliated and in a fury rage. Nothing can convince her the prince is anything but a rake. But when the opportunity to evade her scheming stepmother falls into her lap, she will pay the price, even if it means impersonating the prince's newest friend. This one is I Deal with the Elf King. This is the first book in Married to Magic. And it's by Eliza, Eliza, Elise Culver? Elise? I think that's how you say name. The elves come for two things, ward and wives. In both cases, they come for death. 3,000 years ago, humans were hunted by powerful races with wild magic until the treaty was formed. Now, for centuries, the elves have taken a young woman from Luella's village to be a human queen. To be chosen is seen as a mark of death by the town's folk. A mock 19-year-old Luella is grateful to have escaped as a girl. Instead, she is dedicating her life to studying herbology and becoming the town's only healer. That is, until the elf king unexpectedly arrives for her. This man is also... I feel like almost everyone has heard about this book. This is Master of One by Jada Jones and Daniela Bennett. Sinister Sorcery, Gala Humor, A Queer Romance. Rags is a thief, an excellent one. He's stolen into normal scarfer, picked soldiers' pockets, and even liberated a ring or two off the fingers of passerby until he's caught by the Queen's guard and forced to find an ancient fairy relic for a sadistic royal sorcerer. But Rex could never have guessed this relic would actually be a fae himself, an distractingly handsome, unknowingly perfect ancient fae prince called Shining Talon. Good thing Rex can think on his toes because things can just get stranger from here. This is the first book in the Five Crowns of Auckland. It is the High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. It is a red witch in hiding. Thirteen years fleeing witch, witch hunters. In the living threat of death, 19 year old Remy knows she is possibly the last red witch alive. One moment. And she is determined to stay that way. The Northern Court King has slaughtered her home court and placed a bounty on red witch heads. When four famed warriors enter her tavern refuge, Remy tries to flee. But her magic isn't strong enough to stop a fae prince on a mission. The handsome prince Hale of the Eastern Kingdom wants to stop a war with the Northern Court before his kingdom befalls the same fate as Remy's. He needs a red witch and Remy may be the only person alive who can help him. Can she really trust Prince Hale? Can her fallen court be rescued by, from the evil clutches of the Northern Court King? For the chance to save herself, her people, and help defeat the Northern Kings, then we must put her fate in hell and, and his companions on a dangerous quest to find lost relics. The next one, this is the first book in Iron Crown Fairy Tales, and it is The Thorn Princess by Becca Hattie's. So, we, ha we have Jaime Hawthorne has always felt like an outsider, but now she is starting to wonder who and what she really is. She can see people's auroras, animals watch her wherever she goes, and most of all, sometimes her dreams actually come true. But recently, things have gone from strange to downright bizarre. 
The animals have started following her. Strangers have started watching her. And when she gets angry or upset, inexplicable things are bound to happen. But the craziest thing of all is the sudden arrival of Bella Forbes, a mysterious transfer student who finds her fascinating. The more she gets to know about it, the more she learns about the dark truth behind her lonely, isolated childhood. As she thinks deeper into her past, Ivy discovers the shocking realities, re realities about her lineage and where her destiny lives. This is also the first book in Queens of the Fae and is Fae's Inception by M. Lynn and Melissa A. Craven. Leah Robinson is a murderer. That's what Evan tells her when she's accused of killing her best friend. Her mother always claimed she belongs in a straight jacket. Turns out she was right. When the man with the flashing violet eyes whisked her through a portal into a world beyond her imagination, a world vicious in its beauty and wicked in its lies, Blia begins to wonder if she was ever crazy at all. Every hallucination she's ever had is real, but this new world has its own set of lies and questions. Why are three warriors prepared to battle over her? Who is Griffin of Shea and why did he abduct her? And does falling in love with a man trapping her in this deadly land mean she really has lost her mind after all? There's only one thing Blia knows. She can't trust anything. Not her mind, not her heart, and certainly not the Fae who is, claims he's trying to keep her safe. And my next one is Ember Curse by Connie and Heidi. So this is like damsel meets a heart in the body in the world. So this is the princesses of Elva are beloved by the kingdom and the father of the king. They are cherished and mine cursed. Jane, Alice, Nona, Grace, and Eden carry the burden of being punished for a crime they do not commit or even know about. They are each cursed to be without one, without one essential thing. The ability to eat, sleep, love, remember, or hope and the mother, the queen, is imprisoned, frozen in time in an unblinkable glass box. But when Eden's curse sets on, on her 13th birthday, the princesses are given the opportunity to break the curse, preventing it from becoming a true spell and dooming the princesses for life. To do this, they must confront the one who casts the spell, Regan, a young witch who might not be the villain they thought as well as the wickedness plaguing the own kingdom and family. And this is the first book in the, in the Broken Kingdoms, and that is Curse of Shadows and Twins by L. J. Andrews. Broken between enemies are cursed without an end, a love that will bring a kingdom to its knees. Long ago, Ellie's ancestors stole the crown from the Fae King. As the niece of the Bruno current king, her purpose is to do whatever is asked to ensure her family keeps the throne for centuries to come. The trouble is, Elise would rather sneak into gambling halls with the servants than be a silent princess at a ball. Soon, reckless games are ended when her uncle forces her to negotiations for a marriage. If she refuses, her deadly ill father will pay the price. This is also the first book in the Crystal Island. It is called Untainted by Lillian P. James. And is there, is, there were several things that I was quite skilled at. Wielding a blade and pretending to be a human were two of them. Following the rules and controlling her anger were not. Raised in the heart of the Magdalene Empire, Vanna spent most of her life forced to hide what she was and what she could do until one day she foolishly confronts a strange male she spies, tailing the crown prince. Not only does she does the application not go as planned, but the male claims she possesses a power his people vitally need. He is desperate to return home and refuses to leave without her. Staying would give her life she never thought she would have, but leaving could provide her with the only chance to learn more about her past. The more answers she uncovers about herself, the more questions arise, and nothing is adding up. But I must decide what to do, not only with her life, but with the ancient power inside her. This is also the first book in And Here Comes the Rise, which is also called And Here Comes the Rise by C.C. Penelania, I'm sorry if I that along, A Sword. In the impoverished outer town of a kingdom of fae outrank humans, Faith, an orphan with a talent for soul play, knows the importance of keeping her head down and learn the fae patrol. She and her best friend Jack have long for a better life. 
and her desire to swing her sword in combat may bring the purpose and coin she is in for a dream. When she draws the attention of royal god Nick, she soon learns that her mortal nature isn't the only reason to remain out of sight. Nick is a sky nightwalker, a silent assassin of the mind with the power to enter others' dreams, and whether she trusts him or not, he is about to awaken abilities and faith that shouldn't exist in a human. Nightmarish abilities, deadly abilities, abilities that will teach fate, blood, really does run thicker than water, and if she doesn't trust in higher power soon, blood will run indeed. So the next one is, is the first book in The Truths Within. It is the Empress of Scar Secrets by Andrea Corbin. Uh, long ago, war ravaged the lands of Estrana until an agreement was set. A tentative peace is now on the verge of collapse from centuries old pages. Valina would never start to conquer, no rule, but betrayal forced her hand to protect the forsaken she must attend the quarter century meeting and assume her place at the demon high lord's table just as her parents before. The blood in Valina's veins determine her path, but other secrets will decide her fate. And the lineage she has always denounced now weighs heavily upon her shoulders. The power of an empress was never a weapon she wanted to yield. But for her people, she would take what is hers by battle and blood. High lady she was born, but an empress she was destined to become. Next one is To Make a Kingdom by Nisha J. Tully. This is the first book of Curse of Thorn. And in its sleeping deity meets a court of thorns and roses. And this is uh, after a hundred years I awake, not to true love's kiss, but to a blade at my throat. Enchanted into eternal slumber to escape an evil fate, Thorn is awakened. Not by true love's kiss, but by a man with a sword at her throat. As soon as she does the only thing apprentices can do, nails them in the balls and slicks them with a dagger. But something has gone wrong, because now her entire family is waking up, and Ronan and Moria from an enemy kingdom arrives on her doorstep, seeking answers she doesn't want to give. Bent on revenge, the evil fae returns to claim the princesses and kills everyone asleep in the castle. So Thorn strikes a bargain. Th 30 days to break the curse, or Thorn becomes her property forever. But Thorn has no idea how to break a hundred year old spell that's gone every. As time takes away and she scrambles for a solution, her feelings for London become entwined in her fate, but now she, she must find a way to protect her heart, save herself, and rescue everyone she's ever loved. Next one is Fairy Silver Iron Cold by Vic Malachi, and no well brought up child in Brindley would ever dream of crossing the stumping stones. In Brindley, no one ever goes out at night, and cold iron guards every door and window. For the stream dunk crossing doesn't just lead to the deep forest, it leads to fairy. All children of Sax Saxony were told fairy stories, but the ones of Blindley were spread of protective yellow hard hair flowers and cold iron to ward away the ever looming danger. Claire Exton isn't a well brought up child of Blindley. When her mother dies, her fa father sends Sarah and her brother to live with their grandparents. Guardians of Brindley's Bridge, the fairy. Sierra's mother of fairy stories well knowing, but in Brindley, the tears are dark. Despite their parents' warnings, the children of Brindley play a dangerous game of not the bank. Sierra is the only one to ever take the ultimate bear, cross the stream into fairy. Fairy is beautiful and dangerous, and nothing in fairy is quite so beautiful or dangerous as the young fairy male. Sienna and Mel grew up together as Brindley, watches in horrified fascination, wondering when the fate touched go will disappear over the stream forever. Swallowed up by the hungry woods that have claimed so many others, Brindley breaths a sigh of relief when Sienna goes off to school, town, and goal finally plead. But with the promise to return hanging in the balance, is Brindley right about race and fairy? Next one is These Men and Blooms by Emma Hamm. In a world where magic means power, a small gift is a curse. Thea was not blessed with power. Her gift of devouring plants and absorbing the hidden abilities does not make her stand out among her peers until a young man from the other side of the river sees something in her 
that no one else has seen her before. When his family mercilessly strikes at her pride, he makes a point to ease the sting. Ali's dad is not like his family. He has no interest in magical wealth. He can see through the veil of the world into the fairy realm, and there has no use in his family. He never understood the desire to write the girl to the cost of liver, but she turns his world of grey into a life of colour. At the first opportunity he meets with her, the second he falls in love, and the third he knows he wants to marry her, until the cities are across the river go to war. Their lives are shattered, ripped apart, and thrown asunder. Then, ten years later, a chance meeting brings them back together. He needs a secretary. She needs a job. Neither realize they were about to be thrown into each other's arms once again, and this time he doesn't intend to ever let her go. Okay, so my last one is Unseelie. This is the duology, and this is by Eve Lacey Hoosman. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. My twin sisters both on the run, but different as day and night. One a professional rogue searches for a theme of treasure, the other a challenging searches for the truth behind her origins, trying to find a place to fit in with the realm of Fae, who made her and the humans who shunned her. A Celia Seely green girl looks just like her twin is ruled, but as an ostrich changeling try to navigate her unpredictable magic, Celia finds it more difficult to find with to fight to fit in with the humans around her. When Celia and Isolin, Isolde are caught up in heist gone wrong, make some unexpected allies, they find themselves unraveling a larger mystery that has its root in the history of humans and fate alike. Both sisters soon discover that the secrets of the fairies may be more valuable than any pile of gold and jewels. But can Celia harness her magic and time to protect her sister and herself? Okay, and those are all the books about fairies. So please let me know which books you have been fascinated by. And please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in my next one.